uh, we are looking at the strength of a woman whereby we give you inspirational stories that you can learn from as a young person back at home in studio. I am joined by the beautiful and lovely yeah, should I add more? Should we add on this title, Tabitha? <laughs> By Tabitha Ogoto. Uh, she's a mm -hmm. journalist, a student, and also a programs coordinator for Young Women Leaders Connect, an advocate on youth and women economic empowerment through agribusiness, agri that is, and also a teenage mentor and a governance uh, expert. Thank you very much for creating time to be with us today in the morning. Thank you very much for having me, Michelle. Yes, mm -hmm. you look fantastic. You look awesome as well. I'm so <laughs> drooling over your shows, darling. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, starting us off, uh, mm -hmm. introduce yourself. Uh, tell us what you do. I've mentioned your titles. Yes. But tell, take us to what you do and who is Tabitha. All right. Uh, you've mentioned uh, a bit about myself. I think generally mm -hmm. that is me. Mm -hmm. um, my name is Tabitha Gutu. I am a journalist, student at Masaini University. I am a youth advocate, I'm a programs and leadership coordinator for governance and leadership for the Young Builders Connect, a passionate uh, advocate on matters economic empowerment for women and youth through agribusiness. And I'm also just a, a woman whom has some strength like mm -hmm. the show is today <laughs> exactly and the fact that you're also helping other young women teenagers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, on issues social issues that they're mm -hmm. going through that makes you a woman to like uh, you know be uh, uh you know applauded and also, also appreciated and that's why we, we have you here on strength of of a woman Thank so you tell us me. uh what, what was life like growing up for you where did you grow up all right yeah all right um i grew up um in the village, a small village in Sia County called Signolo. Growing up there, I went to a primary school at Ur in Uranga. It was just a small school, a very mm -hmm. ordinary school. Mm -hmm. And uh, also in my, and, and pretty, and then uh, at, at, a, at a point, I came to study in Nairobi uh, from my class six to eight. From there, I, was, I missed my parents because my, my parents retired to the village. So I went back again to do my high school. So I've done my high school from form one to form four in the village. And I think that formed a very strong basis on what I've translated to be uh, in my life right now and what I stand for and advocate for because some of them I've come across, some of them I've seen happening. And especially, you, you asked me what has really uh, translated to, for example, my passionate uh, advoca advocation for matters agribusiness is because I see a lot of potential growing up that our people have and they can utilize when they're doing their agriculture you know for so example a couple of these things that you could see growing up yeah. uh, being a teenager that yeah yes so growing up for example I'll see that young girls uh, maybe when they get pregnant when they're teenagers the opportunities to go back to school were very null and void because their parents viewed them some of them were even chased away uh view them as people who have failed in life and that's not really the case so for me i always say that if i can get a platform or create one that i could just tell these parents you know uh once somebody has met up messed up the first time doesn't mean that all or everything is lost for them. Mm -hmm. You can still pick them up and encourage them to be what they're supposed to be. That doctor in them, you can still nurture it. Yeah, sure. Like if you've um, made yeah. a mistake, that mm -hmm. doesn't make you like your life. It's all summed up to that particular mistake. Exactly. Also, uh, growing up, I viewed uh, a lot of girls never had confidence. Really, you know, in the village, um, hardly, especially if you go to the, the village schools. You, uh, I, I saw a lot of my, my, my peers, yeah, they had low self-esteem in themselves, low confidence. This translated to them, even some, some of them left school, some of them um, never saw anything good in themselves. So every day of my life when I meet a young girl or somebody, or I'll say my younger self, I will want to tell them something to do with what I saw then, that if my peers would have been told, some of them will be better or they have known how to uh, uh, you know, uh, show up confidently and love themselves. So that is something I always want to do with the teenagers as okay. well. Mm. All right. So what is your educational background like? Because as uh, out from those titles, mm. you picked it like you, you're doing a couple of so many things mm -hmm. and uh, I would like to assume that you're quite very young. So mm. to have like, you know, have all these titles. So take us through your educational background. All right, I'm 23. 
uh, I have, um, okay, like I said, I schooled in primary school. Yes. I, I went to Ranga, partly in Nairobi. High school, I went to Ranga, mm -hmm. and partly in Boro mm -hmm. in, in Alego. I come from Sierra County, as I said. So uh, then uh, after I'd finished my, my high school, by the way, the first time, I don't know, but I was not able to go to university straight, one thing. So when I was not able to go to university straight, of course I scored, I missed the, 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 the university, uh, they call the aggregate, with only two points. Then I told my parents, I don't need to go to a parallel uh, institu I, I learning institution to do my education. I want to be a government sponsor because it's quite expensive. And um, I went back to school again. So this time I went back to school to, in Boro. And uh, going back to school, I really knew that I wanted to be, you know, because sometimes when even you have a lot of passion and you want to do this and so that. So did you get the government sponsorship? Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. I realized, you know, uh, if you do not really uh, show up and even, you know, advance your studies, it becomes a little bit difficult. Mm -hmm. So I went back the second time, and that's uh, now where Bor High School comes in, in okay. Alego. I went there and did my my KCSC and passed very well All and right. joined Marseille University where I'm a third year student mm -hmm. and I'm teaching communication and media technology. Okay. Yes. Tell us more about uh, the problem that you are dealing with, the youth. Uh, is it Youth Connect? Yeah, Young Women Just Connect. Uh, yes. So Young Women Just Connect is, uh, is generally an organization that was formed to bring the minds of young women, especially the ones who maybe are finished or graduated from universities or the ones who are in university and their leaders at their own levels and even the communities. And then we see how we can uh, lobby for issues that really affect our society and come up with solutions through partnerships. So as a program coordinator for governance and leadership, I am mandated to come up with projects, for example. So for me, my mind is always like, OK, as I said, Growing up, I saw issues that I did not, I was not able to address at that time. Mm -hmm. So, being a program coordinator, I'm able to say, for example, uh, the teenage mothers or the teenage students, basically, basically, um, we, we 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 come up with projects that. Uh, Gear, gear towards mentoring them. We go to schools, talk to them about life skills, you know, tell them how life is hard out here if they really don't give it their shot because mm -hmm. some of them do not understand. So it's good we tell them because we've been through it, some of us have been through it. And also we give them real life stories for teenage mothers, you know, like if you, for example, got pregnant when you were in school, it doesn't mean that now you should not go back to school and get married. One key mistake that parents do, which as an organization we clearly noted, is that when these teenage mothers, for example, get pregnant, they are forced to go get married to those men who made them pregnant. Mm -hmm. Some of these men, for example, they're maybe maybe somebody, they're not even, okay, I will not say they're not even ready for marriage or, or they're not to start a family. So the vicious cycle of poverty keeps going on and on and on for this kind of, um, for this kind of families. So we also try to bring the parents on board. Also, the issue of um, uh, youth employment. I'm a key believer that our education system, as much as it has made us to believe that you have to finish school, get to campus, finish campus, go to an office, sit there pretty much mm -hmm. with a tie. Okay, it's okay if it's working for you. But you realize that even if you have a tie or you have a white collar job, you still ha you cannot rely on one stream source of income. We have to be a little bit versatile. So what happens to somebody or a youth in the rural areas? Some of them, they inherit this land. Yes, that's true. Ancestrally. Mm -hmm. So what happens to this youth in the, in the rural area who does not have employment? Mm -hmm. All they rely in is maybe, uh, okay, some of them are into picky picky. Motorbike is not bad, but you see, it's so flooded right now that you cannot say that you can get something that can sustain even for a month. So what do you guys do? So for us, we, we tell them that, um, an, yeah, that, that the land is a very rich, I say asset for us. So what we try and do is partner with organization or officers who can generally impact their knowledge on land and how they can use them better sustainably. And also with the aspect of climate change as an SDG, um, we also try to incorporate that. 
and advocate that agribusiness is also a source of employment. Okay, so do you have like a, a, a learning session or by you're offering this, all this information mm -hmm. when it comes to leasing of land, when it comes to, mm -hmm. you know, uh, tilling of land and how to do it and also the production and the business aspect of it? Quite practically. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, um, you see, this, the, we have value chain actors in agriculture. Uh, we, tr we, we teach them or train them, we bring the, the, the facilitators, uh, quite professional, to teach them on the, on the magnitude of uh, the value chain from production direct to the market. And even sometimes, for example, if, you know, there is no point of you coming, for example, and train me about poultry and give me the, what I require materially to have large production and you're not giving me a market. So we also bring sometimes uh, these, um, you say, organizations or people who deal in the line of poultry. So we make sure we, we take them through the value chain up to the last actor which is the market mm -hmm. so it make it readily available for them all right mm -hmm. i'm so sure it's not like a standalone project it's you not. have a, a team you work with so who mm. are this particular team that you work with and how uh, and couple of challenges that you actually face number one we make these projects to be owned by the local people you know when it's owned by the local people and for example Generally, we do not just come and tell you we want to train you in agribusiness or agriculture. We always have those open forums. We ask you, where are your challenges? And how well do you think they can be addressed? And then now we find resource people to come and do that for them. Um, so when we make it locally uh, available for them, and then also we believe in the strength of synergies. So we have partners that we get to work together. For example, we have the Agriculture Sector Support Development Program too in CI County, which we have worked with, the IRA, and other seed companies, these agricultural organizations, which are also really working towards making sure that the farmers and the youth and women generally, you know, get the best out of what they do in terms of agriculture and agribusiness. Mm -hmm. mm. All right. So looking back to the projects that you've done, especially when it comes to Young Women Leaders Connect, mm -hmm. uh, what, what what type of impact are you people having and uh, uh, how do you actually like you know look back and say that we have done a b c d and d and that uh, we are actually helping young ladies out here all right i'll say that so um we have made strides and we're still continuing it's been a journey but then we are very happy to also say that uh, the impact we have created in societies, for example, um, in matters advocating for teenage mothers, um, we have even end menstrual poverty campaigns that we, we are doing and we have still, uh, we had in the past. We are able to say that we've been able to impact lives, change lives, and through agribusiness, that is, that is a key major thing, I will say that if you go, for example, to areas that we have had sessions and even brought organizations to work with this particular group of women and youth, they are very thankful because their knowledge has been broadened and they have actually embraced the fact that you do not really need to go to a city if there is no job there and you've left your land at home just playing idol. Mm. Yes. And for young person who's watching this, and let's look at, um, you know, freshly uh, a new graduate uh, student, mm -hmm. and they're thinking on a space of just, uh, you know, white collar jobs. Mm. What would be your advice when it comes to ways to just free, your, free yourself and get, your, get yourself in a space of economic independence? This is what I will say. Um, you see, I'm really, I'm really not into this mindset that you need to get a job once you're done with the college or what. Start doing something when you're in college or university. I think I learned this thing quite early. And uh, it's because I saw uh, the period that uh, I awaited those people, not everybody, but a good number of the graduates. After they graduated is when they start looking for jobs. What can I do with myself to make myself productive? So let us start doing um, let us start doing uh, a few things, even when we are in colleges. But for those who have graduated, for example, and uh, you are thinking what next for us, technology and innovation is a space for us as youth right now that we need to really get into. Um, let's get into innovative spaces, push ourselves, let's just show up. You know, I always say nobody will know what you're passionate about or what you can do, basically, if you do not do anything about it. So my challenge is always that if, for example, you want to be a CEO, but then, like in agriculture, okay, 
you, you you just start with your hands you know it's good to get dirty and start with what you have and what you have okay. and then with time you realize that uh, it just grows it just grows maybe you're a ceo of your own agricultural farm and all that you'd be able to just sit with the time on the table uh, you know uh, right. and be like i started from somewhere just start from where you are even if it's business mm -hmm. all you need to do is broaden your network networks for me always is everything sometimes this network don't need to pay when you hear that there is somewhere where there is a um an event where you can go just and network Work, you just show up mm -hmm. you know so also we need to demystify this aspect of um, thinking that the youth always have that uh, I need I need to make it today I has to be today I has to add up the pressure yeah? let's trust the journey yes let's just trust the journey of life it happens but sometimes you need to pay the price you, you know like you sometimes you need to use a lot of your money by the way mm -hmm. for you to get that a million or a thousand shillings that we all, all dream about. All right, so. so let's look at who is eligible to be part of these programs. And are you guys uh, in all different counties or are you guys for, for now in CIA? No, 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 no. Uh, the Young Women Just Connect is a national organization. Mm -hmm. And that's why I told you, like, we've, we've worked even in Tarakanithi County. Uh, so who's eligible to be part of the So of anybody is eligible, but you have to be somebody who has, who has a leadership quality and wants to be a change maker in the society. Because that's all we need for us to make the next generation a better place even for the youth to come. All right. Okay. Mm. Uh, allow me to take you back to the the club, the She Rise Club. Mm. Apart from addressing uh, on uh, issues pertaining teenage pregnancies, what other issues are we addressing? And yeah, take me to that. You know, some of us, if we were never mentored, I will not even be able to sit down like I'm sitting down here mm -hmm. and say anything. So there is power in mentorship. So in the She Rise Clubs, we always want to mentor the young crop of women leaders that we'll have you know leadership begins from way 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 back when you're young so we mentor them mm -hmm. we also make sure that um, they're able to come up with projects we want them to be as innovative as they can as young as young girls you know and sometimes we give them the space you know peer education you know they they, they talk amongst themselves through these serious clubs like we have a serious club in kibra uh, so this club basically trans in a way that um, this it, there's, a, there's a day allocated in the week with mm -hmm. the school, mm -hmm. which these girls sit down, they discuss about their issues, mm -hmm. they're able to, you know, also talk about this thing freely amongst the seven so that advise themselves. it's like a life skill. A life skills, you know. Okay. We also, um, you know, uh, it saddens me that uh, we have been doing a research and it shows that many of these teenage pregnancy cases that we have in this country is the result of a young girl waking up one day and she was not able to access a sanitary towels back. You know, some of us, or some of the girls in this country, they come from very poor backgrounds. And it's very okay to come from a poor background. You can change it if you want. And so you find that during the menstrual cycle, they're not able to even just get a pack of 50 shillings sanitary mm -hmm. towels. So what do they do? If somebody can give them that 50 shillings to buy sanitary they towels, they'll be doing that. They'll not mind. And mm -hmm. in the process, they get pregnant, mm -hmm. you know. So for us, it's always a pain uh, f f for us to hear these stories. Like, we have them. They say, me, I got pregnant because I did not have 50 sheets to buy sanitary towels. So I had to give myself to a man mm -hmm. whom used me mm -hmm. and gave me. Do you feel like this conversation should yeah. start back to the parents and it, just shifting the mindset? Mm. Uh, not only just on the aspect of like uh, if you get pregnant mm -hmm. that is the end of it you're a failure but yeah. also on the mm -hmm. aspect that uh, you know that I need to have a conversation with my child if we lack and also issue of poverty right this conversation should start with the parents mm -hmm. but you see this is what I always say that everybody has their own lives to live mm -hmm. as a young girl I always tell them you know if you cannot access a, a packet of sanitary towel and sometimes your parent can genuinely does not mm, have true. does not have Very true. you can talk to somebody maybe even a friend or a teacher or you know or just find a means to caution that but do not give yourself to somebody mm. to make use of you yes. and then one day you'll be sitting down you know mm. these things they, they, you know come always come hunting you'll be sitting down and say i wish i never did that and i also feel like it's mm. also on the aspect that if you know better you do better oh, yeah. and the fact that you guys are on this uh, uh, on this program like uh, she rise and telling them the real truth that mm -hmm. helps them have a better uh, option when, when it comes to making decisions yes that is that is a culture we want to develop in our young girls and we i really believe 
believe that uh, if other organizations that are doing similar programs, we can invest really uh, in a younger. But you know, f for a minute, Michelle, one challenge I think uh, we are also losing it uh, is when we want to really advocate for these girls to 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 be better. All that. Mm -hmm. Uh, according to the UN reports, uh, during this COVID period, the teenage pregnancies, they said that the teenagers make their fellow teen teenagers pregnant, you know. Mm -hmm. So it means that uh, if we are just going to be talking to our girls, teenage girls, and leaving the teenage boys. Uh, the boy yes. has to be involved in this conversation. It's, 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 it's a whole society yes. conversation. Mm -hmm. It's for the welfare of everybody. So the boy also has to be talked to, and the girls also have to be talked to, but it, it, we can't just leave any other side out. Mm -hmm. Yes, it comes from the parents, the society, mm -hmm. to everybody. Okay. Yes. Do you think it also comes with the aspect of taboo when it comes to menstrual mm -hmm. uh, conversation? And also having young girls who still feel like the, it's a shameful conversation to have also with the, another person, maybe a teacher. So they prefer to just shy, shy, like, sh on it, like we don't talk about this. Mm -hmm. So we end up finding different ways to just solve it. Right, right, right. Uh, you know, of course, even having sexual conversation with our parents yeah. have been made to be a taboo. So telling my parents that I need a sanitary towel for so many other people, me, mm -hmm. I'll say it, mm -hmm. they will not, because also parents, some of them are not very good with their kids. They mm -hmm. don't, don't have that rapport. They are so harsh and all that. So mm -hmm. we, we always encourage that as parents, we need to make a very conducive environment for our, our kids to reach mm -hmm. out to us, tell mm -hmm. us this is happening and all that. And then we see how we can move forward. All right, Abitha, for someone who's watching us talk about this, uh, this issue, and uh, they need to come in, probably help you guys in one or the other. How can they come through for you? All right. Um, for us, uh, you can reach us on our social media. Mm -hmm. uh, we are on Facebook, Young Women Leaders Connect. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm also on Facebook, Tabitha Gutu. Um, and across all the social media handles, you can also email us, youngwomenleadersconnect at gmail.com. And uh, you can just, if you can't also reach us and you think you have the capacity to do something in just where you, in the local places where you are, we just help those girls, help those individuals transform minds. Just do it. It's a whole a joint process. We can't do it by ourselves. All right. Thank you very much. So, guys, back at home, make sure you reach out to Tabitha Gata. Thank you for creating time to have this conversation with us, Tabitha. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's been a pleasure. All right. So, make sure you follow up with Tabitha uh, Ogutu. She's a, a journalist, a program coordinator for Youth Women Leaders connect and uh, keep up the conversation and if you have one if you can help in one way or the other and if you would like to be part of this uh, particular uh, young women leaders connect you can surely follow them across all the social media handles and they will respond okay mm -hmm. so at y254 channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles at michelle ashira is where you can find me across all my social so we'll be right back with so much more right here on wcw